everybody. I am so happy once again that you chose to join us again. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we come to study your word. Father, I ask for your blessings on each hearer individually and collectively. I pray, Father, that your word will go forth and just make a difference in the lives of those who hear it. Father, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are still on article number 13. And I guess you figured out by now we'll be here for a minute. The article is a gospel church. And it, the author writes, we believe that a visible church of Christ is a congregation of baptized believers associated by covenant in the faith and fellowship of the gospel, observing the ordinances of Christ governed by his laws and exercising the gifts, rights, and privileges invested in them by his word, that its only scriptural officers are bishops, pastors, and deacons whose qualifications, claims, and duties are designed, I'm sorry, defined in the epistles to T Timothy and Titus. So, if you recall, uh, our scripture is coming from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 1 through 13. And we have been reading the NIV version. And again, as I read our verses, I ask you to take note of how often Paul mentions Christ Jesus in any manner. So, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 1 through 13, the NIV version. It says, Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sostenus, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched with every enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge, because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with his, with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another, so that there may be no divisions among you and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you say, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? So if you remember last time, we ended our study by saying, no matter how messed up the church at Corinth was, and they were that, but because God called them sanctified in Christ Jesus and also called them to be saints, that is what they are no matter how it may look to the human eye. And Paul is, is very careful to address them in the beginning of this letter as how God sees them. Uh, another thing that Paul so tactfully does in, in his writing to this group of believers is his constant mention of the name Jesus Christ. I mean, in the first 10 verses, the name of Jesus Christ is mentioned 10 times. So at least one time in every verse, grammatically speaking, that's an overkill, but Paul is not concerned about grammar. He is 
cleverly making a point. He, he wanted their minds to be immediately centered on Jesus Christ. Paul knew that the answer to the problem in the church had nothing to do with his ability to discuss and reason with them, but in them being reconciled to Christ Jesus. He knew that the only way the problem would be solved is to keep Christ in the center and in the forefront. You ever tried to have a discussion with, with different folk when each one thinks their thoughts on the situation is correct and that the other person is wrong? Most times it turns into a useless discussion. And most times at the end, it may be worse than when it began. You know, we, we tend to dig our heels in the sand and hold on to our position. In, in other words, we are like, I shall not be moved. Paul also knew that the solution was not, in, not to lay down a bunch of rules and regulations. None of us do well when we are beat across the head with, this is what is expected of you. Or with the old adage, cause I said so. You know, how your parents used to do. Why? Because I said so. If, if, if there is anything that our modern news feeds have taught us is that we can't regulate a person's heart. Think of all the rules on the book. And, and better, or, or it's like we've got a bunch of rules on the books. And here lately... A few folk and police officers have even been convicted for wrongfully killing a, a black person or a person of color. And yet, as early as this week, and, and by the time you hear this, it may be last week, but another recent no not warrant ended with a 22-year-old African-American young man being fatally shot. And if that's not bad enough, it was also a deja vu moment. It was in the city, the same city, as George Floyd's killing. And in the same manner as Breonna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky. So, first of all, why would they send a SWAT team? Then secondly, and maybe even more importantly, is you would think somebody in the chain of command between the issuing of the warrant and it being carried out, you would think that, that somewhere, somebody would have had a light bulb moment and said, let's do this thing different. But no. We have seen the same thing play out over and over and over again, which says rules on the book is, is, is not the answer. It's, it says that there needs to be an attack on the heart. And, and, and that's what Paul is doing. Paul wanted a heart change. He wanted the believer's mind and heart to be immediately centered on Jesus Christ. Verse 2 says, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. As we have previously, as we said previously, Paul, first of all, pointed out to them their position in Christ. They were set apart to be holy. It, it didn't take a brain for them to know that they were not acting holy. They were called to be saints, which means that they were set apart, consecrated, sacred, and holy. As saints, we have, we have given ourselves to, to live a consecrated, sacred, and holy life, and all for the glory of God. And to accomplish this holy, this high calling, God gives us a new heart, one that is renewed and, and recreated in righteousness and, and true 
and it, it's recreated in righteousness and it's true in true holiness. Notice that he does not give us a new and improved heart. That would be like having a 2019 Toyota Avalon and going to the dealership to purchase a 2022 Toyota Avalon. That would be new and improved. It's new in that it is a 2022 model. It's a new model of the old 2019 with improvements. So that's not what God does. He gives us a new heart, one that is renewed and recreated in righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It's not by happenstance that this verse is written to the church at Corinth. Sometimes, even though we know a thing in the back of our minds, it doesn't always come to the forefront until somebody we hold in high regards point it out. And, and Paul here is pushing all the buttons. He points out that their position in Christ Jesus unites them with all of the other believers everywhere who call on the name of Jesus Christ. He states the obvious that Jesus Christ is one Lord, which makes him Lord of all. And, and so Paul is extending their fellowship, uniting them to believers everywhere. He's showing them that being a believer was bigger than just their local church. Being the church of God meant that they were a universal church. That, and, and that was much bigger than just the local church. They had brothers and sisters all over the world. They were a part of the body of Christ. Then in verse 3 he says, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but sometimes... I take verses like that in the Bible just as normal salutations, you know, kind of like we use hello and bless you or may God be with you. But this time, in light of the background of the church, it's as though the Holy Spirit put brakes on and said, stop, don't you dare go any farther. Look both ways before crossing. And I was literally stopped and looking both ways for a few days. I couldn't finish the lesson without meditating on it. One way is grace. So I had to look that way. The other way is peace. So I had to look that way. And they are both coming from God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we know that grace is is unmerited favor and blessings of God. It, it, it's undeserved. It, it, you know, we can't earn it. He just gives it to us. When I was a teen, you know, coming up in my teen years, we didn't have things like cell phones or internet or emails, none of that stuff. It, it wasn't even a word. We didn't have any other modern day gadgets that could put you in contact almost instantly with your parents. What we had was a payphone, and it could it would cost you a dime to make a call. As 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 I started venturing off away from home, uh, my sisters and me, uh, or my siblings and me. My mother would always remind us to keep a dime for a phone call if we got into trouble. That dime was a resource that could be used in case something went down and you needed a ride home. It, it, was, it, it would be tucked away on your person in a place out of sight and most often in your shoe. But it was, it, it was always with you. And it gave a certain amount of assurance 
that you could always phone home. It, it wasn't always something uh, you thought about, especially if things was going well. But if something went down and your ride home became shaky, it was there. Paul says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace, like that dime, tucked away are resources to be used by the believer. God's grace is bigger than the depth of the deepest ocean. We can't get to the bottom of it. We can't use it up. The kindness and love that lives in, in the very nature of God, it's too amazing for my little pea brain to comprehend. It's so big, so continuous, that it covers all the earth. It's available for all believers at the same time. And it never gets, it's never used up. David, in talking about the Spirit of God in Psalms 139, uh, verses 7 through 12, the NIV version, David says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heavens, to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in, in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hands will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light becomes night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. So even though David is talking about the Spirit of God, grace can be seen in that same light. It's always there with us. We may not think much about it in good times, but when we mess up, when the mess we are in is our own fault, it is good to know that grace and peace are with us from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. They are, all, they, they are always with us, tucked away, but readily available. Like that dime in my shoe. In times of trouble, it will make its presence known by shifting around under my foot, causing the indent to be felt. As if it's to say, I'm here, use me. And just knowing that it's there for me. Peace, like a river, floods my soul and all is well. When grace is there, when I recognize the presence of grace, then peace automatically comes. It comes like a flood that, 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 that lets me know, lets my soul know that all is well. Well, that's all for today. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And come back and join us next time as we continue with the church, the gospel church, and just unwind or unfold all that the Holy Spirit has for us. So see you, see you next time. Until then, bye-bye.